What's up, y'all? Frank is here to show you his Franken ball. Oh, check that out. No, it's his Franken ball. He loves his Franken ball. I'm here to talk about pop rivets again, and we're gonna look at the new, relatively new Doyle, I think 13 inch pop rivet tool that is available at Harbor Freight. What you got there? Pop rivets are highly misunderstood. A lot of people, if you go over any post, go back a couple of days on our Reddit in the tools section, you can see somebody say, what screwdriver do I need to remove these? You don't use the screwdriver to remove those. You you drill them out with a drill bit, and that's how they're attached. You drill a hole, you take your tool, put the rivet in it, put it through the hole, squeeze it until it pops, until it compresses the back, and these reliably hold two pieces of metal or other materials together where there's not enough beef. See how thin that metal is? If you tried to put a screw in here with threads, it's so thin that the threads just won't thread right and it won't hold. So pop rivets are the answer to that. They're very handy. They're very commonly found uh, everywhere. And as a locksmith, you more than likely will run across them and need to remove them and reinstall them for any number of uses. But one of the major uses that I've found is for latches and strike plates on metal doors where you can't use a screw or for some reason the threads are stripped out. Now you might say, well, why don't you just tap it bigger, go the next size up. Well, if you have a tight metal door, for instance, and you try to go up a size, the head of the screw is gonna stick out and cause problems with the door. So we're gonna go ahead and look at pop rivets in that use. And I'm gonna go ahead and take these off so that you immediately know how to get these off. And before any locksmith out there who thinks they know better than every other locksmith in the world whines about using a fastener that is quote, non-removable to attach something, that's just silly because it's almost easier to drill out and reinstall a pop rivet than it is to fight a, a stripped out screw or try to countersink something and make it work and re-thread it. It's easier just to pop rivet it on. And if you ever have to remove it, you simply just drill it out. It's not that hard because pop rivets have their own pilot hole. You just drill the head off. We're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna look at this new tool from Doyle, from Harbor Freight because I just picked it up and I'm very hopeful that it will replace this goofy guy that I've had for quite a while. This is actually my second one of these. It's just too big. So as you can see, it does have its own pilot hole quote right there. That's from popping it off. I'm gonna take this 3 16th drill bit, put it right there again, has its own pilot hole. And since these are aluminum, that's it. That's all you got to do. Worst case scenario, stays in there. You can just keep drilling. Just like that. Or you can just tap it with, with, with a, with a punch like this just take it and punch it the rest of the way out no big deal so that's that's all you have to do to get a, a pop rivet out y'all what's up frank it's honestly not that hard now those are aluminum rivets which is pretty much what i use all the time uh, there are steel rivets out there that you can use but that's for really like structural issues where you'd really need it to be as strong as possible when you're talking about force this way say on a strike plate or on a latch face on a door that the, the, the doesn't really need to be it just needs to hold it still so as far as using metal for that it's not overly necessary of course you can but aluminum rivets are a cheaper and B, they hold just fine. There's been numerous times when I've drilled and put in latches with pop rivets because the screw threads were stripped out and I've come back years later and they're, they're just as tight as they've always been, especially on metal doors. There's, there's really no big deal between using metal 
and aluminum, but today we're going to talk about this guy, the 13 inch heavy duty professional hand riveter. That's right. The one good thing about this is it goes from 332nd, 8th inch, 532nd, 316 inch, which is my most commonly used, and quarter inch. Now, what I'm upgrading from is this guy. This one is considerably more expensive. This thing comes with uh, packs of assorted rivets and is $5. Like this guy for a $5 tool. Now I have had to replace it a few times because mainly using the rib, the cheap rivets that come with it, they, they get jammed up in the nose of the tool and, and then they just die. But it's a, as with Harbor Freight, it, it's a $5 tool. It lasts perfectly fine. You can actually buy two of them at one time for a whole whopping $10 and have a backup in case you run into a problem. However, this guy was more like 35 ish dollars. So why get this? There were a couple of reasons. Number one, whenever you're pop riveting with this handheld guy, right? When you put a pop rivet in, at the start of it, the handle is spread out really far like that. And if you're trying to do it one handed, it does require a little bit of muscle and I'm having some problems with my elbows. So doing that, the grip, if you have it not a really super strong grip, then it can actually be really hard to use those sometimes. That's why when I saw that, I was like, hey, you know, that may work better. It may make it a little bit easier for me. Now I will say, and we've talked about this on Saturday Morning Live, that there are uh, pneumatic or air compressor versions of pop rubber tools. If you're doing this in a production sense where you're pop riveting things all the time excuse me frank Is it, excuse me watch out if you're doing this all the time of course you may want to look into buying a, a pneumatic version or the air powered version or even a milwaukee uh, 12 volt platform has a, a pop rivet tool however those are like two or three hundred dollars and, and if you're if you're not using it all the time it's kind of a, what I would consider a ridiculous waste of money if you're just doing it randomly, like kind of like I do. Just every so often, you run across pop rivets and you need them. If you're using it on the daily, you probably already know that you're going to want to go with an air-powered version or, you know, like the 12-volt version from Milwaukee. However, again, as a locksmith who randomly uses these guys, not often, this guy, $5, you can't beat it except for the fact it's just really hard to squeeze. And that's why we want to look at this guy. Also, this goes up to quarter inch. This does not. This stops at your 3 16 size, which is okay, but every so often I need a quarter inch. So then I went along a long time ago and I bought this guy. It is much bigger. And another problem with it is, is it won't fit you know, this isn't the ideal storage solution, but I keep all my rivets in a little, all my, my rivet kit in a little bag like this. A lot of us use bags for specialty kits, but but this guy, this doesn't, it doesn't fit in there. It's, it's way too long. And I'm thinking this guy might just fit in there with all my other rivets. As you can see here, I've got separate separate containers for different size rivets that I use a lot of. I also have a rivet nut setter. That's a whole different topic. We're not really gonna talk about that today, but yeah, my ideal thing is to A, get rid of this blue guy or leave it in the shop so that everything will fit in one bag. But let's go ahead and open it and take a look at the Doyle 13 inch rivet nut rivet tool, pop rivet tool. Pop. Hey, Frankie, you got two balls. Oh, first thing, look at that. It will fit in my, my bag, AWP rivet bag. I love it. I love it. Already love it immediately, just simply for that reason. Uh, Let's take a look at the construction. It's a pretty solid tool. Oh, 
it's got kind of a spring loaded mechanism there uh, I like having this because the, the things will eject in there as we'll see when we pop rivet something without that when you squeeze it together it shoots out the shaft of the rivet or the post of the rivet so you kind of you can't be like looking into it when you do it because you'll, you'll put your eye out with that guy you got to be careful with that especially if there's people around you with the ejection chamber kind of like this guy had this is really just an upgraded version of this smaller uh, a little bit sleeker and uh, when you do it they go into that so there's no danger there looks like uh, each one of them is is you can you can probably not see it but that's the quarter inch version uh, one thing that uh, this I don't see one on here, but one thing about these guys is it has this little wrench, and this wrench is used to switch these guys out. Uh, I don't see it on this guy. Let's see if this will work for that. No, that is really, you're just going to have to use a pair of pliers to get that off. So let's go ahead and unscrew the quarter inch version and look for the 332nd eighth inch. Eighth inch, three sixteenths, right there. Let's put that guy on. Put this in the handle. It looks like you can take this off. I wonder. I guess that's if one gets jammed in there. Yeah. So let's see. That's that's what it does. Is Probably in case one gets jammed in there. Okay. All well, been good is to go try it now. One of the biggest importantest things about rivets is getting the right length because if it's too long for the material, it won't compress to make it tight. So you do have to make sure and you do have to carry several different lengths. These are the three sixteenths, like I said, that really fits perfect for latches and when we go back up front i will show you one thing see these are the common dome style rivets there is a company out there that does or several companies that make a countersunk head rivet which is my preferred however they're more expensive i'm not going to use it for this example however the countersunk rivets work absolutely great for latch faces and strike plate faces however for this test we're just going to we're just going to show you with the regular round so again choosing the right size lining up the holes just like that i'm going to clamp these together so they stay together and whenever i'm doing rivets we're going to look at this and see hold on okay so that one that one may be a little too short it does suck up a good bit so we're going to go the next size longer yeah that'll give us that'll give us a little bit more oomph to it uh, now one thing i do do is because of how these fit and how they go on you don't want you need your holes to kind of line up as good as possible so typically i will go ahead on a latch and i'll put both rivets in now it's not going to stay because you know gravity will make it fall out in this case since i've got it clamped we don't have to do this Let's go ahead and take a look at this guy, and I'll show you the main problem with it. And that is, see how, see how far, once you start, see how far those handles, like we're already at pressure right there. So you do have to, you, you got to have pretty big hands and a pretty strong grip to do this. And that's one of the real big issues with this $5 tool, or even most other, even the better ones. So we're going to squeeze once remember it's going to shoot out the back here so you got to be careful not to be have your eye in the way or whatever we're going to squeeze twice boom it doesn't well sometimes it shoots out didn't do it just then yeah that's good that's good all right let's try the new guy let me move it just back out of the way a little bit and uh see how this new one fits works all right so we're gonna drop this down in there 
spread it just like that. Looks like we're off a little bit there. So boom. Okay, a little bit further back. It's definitely now a two-handed tool, so oh that's that's much easier. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Okay. So works pretty well. Does pretty much the same thing. That's how rivets work, y'all. Huh, I like it. It's the Doyle 13 inch rivet tool. Kind of glad I got that. Now I don't have to carry that bigger one around, and I do have the quarter inch available. And like I mentioned, these are from Albany, Albany County Fasteners.com. These are a little long. Uh, I, I ordered these and then just never reordered shorter ones. 3 8 inch is a little bit long, so we may actually see an example of what happens when you try to rivet something that's too long. But I do want to show you the countersunk head, how handy they come into play as far as using them on latches and stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and rivet this guy together. And hope it's going to work. There we go. One more, one more time. All right. So, as you can see, countersunk head versus a domed head. This gives you a lot more flexibility, especially when you have a tight door. And also I might note, this one was really long, but because they're quality rivets, they, they still will work fairly well, even if they're a little bit too long. I do need to go ahead and order. I think I'll do that after this video, order another bag of shorter versions. But uh, yeah, the countersunk head is actually pretty much a necessity in our world because when you close the door, if you have this rounded dome head sticking off of it, it may rub or hit the uh, frame of the door. So in addition to getting you a new tool, go ahead and jump on eBay or albanyfasteners.com and get you some 3 16 by, the longest you really would ever need would be the 3 8. So a bag of these maybe and then the bag next size down that's it. And of course, most box stores carry boxes of rivets that, that'll work. They're decent. They're not the best, but you know, I try to stay with a quality rivet because the worst thing to happen with a rivet gun is for it to break halfway and the post of the rivet get jammed in the nozzle. That's the number one reason why you would need to carry uh, a backup rivet gun because when that happens, when you're in mid rivet, it's easier just to grab your backup and finish the job and then deal with the stuck rivet later. So any questions or comments, as always, post them in the comments section and uh, enjoy your rivet popping, pop, pop riveting, I guess. Thanks for watching y'all. I almost forgot, this thing's kind of handy to keep in your rivet kit. Even though you only need like three or four sizes, uh, it's good to have one of these.